So let's have a look at an Apple Motion tutorial. Uh, a tutorial that's showing you emerging text, text emerging from a plain background. Now this is really a deconstruction of the whole process. So you'll have to follow it carefully from the slides, I think. I may get around to doing one that's a, uh, shall we say, a screen recording. But for the time being, we'll use this. Now by deconstruction, I mean we're going to look at the individual components of each step. Um, and Apple Motion's relation to Affinity Photo and Designer is simple. Because what you can do here with this simple text emerging in a 3D fashion from a plain background, you can certainly use your Affinity programs, Designer or Photo, to enhance that and enhance it a great deal. So the first step is to open Motion and select a new Motion project. That will give you the plain screen you can see in the background there. Now just note over on the right hand, top right hand side of the project browser there it says presets 1080 and the frame rate 29.97. Well that's NTSC. Hmm, that's a good standard but Personally, I prefer to use 30 frames per second, but there you go. I just like being different. You can see the other sizes there. You don't really have to change anything. So click open and you're presented with a plain background screen like that. So start by enabling solid color. In this case, just a plain blue is fine. Make sure it's centered. Um, if you've been twiddling with motion, you may have uncentered things. So just check that it seems to be centered on the screen there. You don't have to fiddle with it. It's probably all right as it is. Now you can see the group and the color mode. You can see layers there. Just like in Affinity, you've got layers. And the color solid. And you can check that. And you can make it whatever color you like. But we're going to leave it with the standard, bog standard blue. Now, select the text tool and type in the word Emerge. That's fairly straightforward and it appears in the center of the screen there. Make sure the text is centered, of course. And you've got the various text options where you can do that. Down the bottom right hand side there, Text, Emerge, Opacity, Blend Mode, and the font is Meloriac, M-E-L-O-R-I-A-C. That's the one I use because it's a good solid block font. Just what's nice for a 3D, um, a 3D image like this. So open the text panel, which is just there. And you can see the various options you've got. Use a strong font for this, and as I said, I use Meloriac, an unusual name, but just right for the purpose. And in the text panel, very similar to Affinity, um, these panels, so you shouldn't get too lost in them. There's a lot of them, but just be careful as you step around and you'll find your way to them. The ones you have active are blue, see, Inspector and Layers, and you've got Text and Format. And in the format, of course, you can do all the text formatting that you like. That's fairly standard. So very similar to Affinity, you won't get lost in this. Increase the size considerably so it's really chunky. Something like 288 is good. You might think that's really big, but you'll see in a minute where we're going with it. Now go back to Properties and change the Y position of the text so it's centered vertically and you can see the Y position there. I've got it highlighted with an arrow and just set to about 108.04 is about the center of that. Um, yours might be slightly different depending on the text and so on. Now go back to the text tab and select appearance and check the 3D text checkbox. You can see it just there. So you've got, again, you've got your properties, behaviors, filters, text, and then appearance. 
If you've got this on a very small screen and not a desktop, it's probably going to be hard to read these little letters, but there you go. Experiment. Make sure the playhead, that's down in the bottom timeline there, make sure the playhead is at the beginning of the timeline and still in appearance, that's format, appearance and layout, the th three options in the in the text panel. Check the keyframe on depth, it turns yellow. You can see the word depth there, 3D text depth. And it's set to zero and just click on the little triangle that pops up there and it'll turn yellow. That's a keyframe. Don't worry about trying to explain what they are at the moment, just accept it's a keyframe. Next, go along the timeline to 7 seconds. That is, drag the playhead along to 7 seconds and increase the depth to 355 and add another keyframe. Now be careful when you're doing this because sometimes it adds it automatically but sometimes there's a little minus sign in there and you'll actually be removing the keyframe. So you've got to go backwards and forwards a little bit to get it right. Now bring the weight down. We're still in appearances, 3D text. And you can see the weight there, just above the arrow that's pointing to front edge. Bring the weight down to about Zero, minus 0 0.78 to minus 0 0.92 and select front edge and in the drop down select square so the front edge is the edge of the text and you want that square so now if you move the playhead back to the beginning and scroll it along you'll see it go from flat to 3D. Now obviously I can't do that here but the playhead's on the right and you can see it's in 3D. You can see the two keyframes there controlling the word emerge, little red dot in the line the little and the little red dot at the end of it. Now we have to put in the light source. Now a good 3D effect has a light source showing on it. So from the add object control right at the top of the screen You've got a plus sign, a gear wheel, and a couple of little squares and rectangles inside each other. Select, click on the plus sign, which is the add object, and select light. You can use the the um, you can use the keyboard shortcuts if you like. If you can remember them all, good luck. You're better at it than I am because I can never remember the things. As soon as you do that, you'll see a pop-up asking you if you want to make this into a 3D um, display. That's what we're doing. So select switch to 3D. That's what you want. The light panel now opens and you have another layer in the project. See in layers there, you've got the light panel sitting at the top. We'll leave the color white. That's fine at the moment. Don't want anything else. As we want the light source to stay centered, but coming from higher up, move the y-axis setting to about 602. Bring it way forward by setting the z, that's x, that's axis, by setting the z-axis to a really high number like 1514. That exit, axis changing to exit is auto-correct in this thing, and I wish it wouldn't do it keep forgetting to turn it off but you can see on the left hand side you've got properties in the in the light layer left hand side light properties transform position X leave that as it is the Y position and the Z position it's a three-dimensional thing remember so you're bringing moving the light source around now that the light is positioned we can play with the color solid a bit so let's set it to white for a start. Yeah, I know it was blue, but now we're going to make it white. It doesn't look white because the light source is changing it. That's okay. That's what we want. Now we need to adjust the intensity, and that's what's changing the color solid. So cue up the playhead to zero again, as we've got there and select the light panel. 
You can see in properties, behaviors, filters, and light on the left hand side there. Now adjust the intensity to about 112 for the moment. You can see the text totally disappears. We need to bring it back a little bit actually, because that's completely blank. Although that you may like it like that, depending on what you're using as a background. Remember this is deconstructing how it's done. So you can virtually put anything you like in the background and virtually anything you like in the foreground. Any sort of text, any type of font. You could probably put even, if you wanted to be able to control it, you could put a group of objects. There's one, two, three, four, there's six letters there. No reason you couldn't have six individual objects suitably created in Affinity Designer or Photo. Now move the playhead along the timeline to about three seconds. And try setting the intensity try setting the intensity to about 73. And you can see the letters are now starting to emerge from that. Set a keyframe here at three seconds. You can see down the bottom there on the timeline you've now got a couple of keyframes showing. And I've got the information panel along the bottom showing, so you can see what's happening there. Don't try and get too technical with a lot of this in motion, um, especially if you're fairly new to this. And if you're doing this exercise, you probably are, and that's fine. We're all new at, a, at some stage or other. So with this one, don't ignore, don't get confused by all of the technicalities. Just start simple and keep it simple. And as you need an option, you'll end up looking for it, finding it, working out how it works. Now, we still need a bit of work, so we'll introduce shadows. And you can see there, there's a tick box. Just below all the light controls, tick that, tick shadows on. And pop there on the right hand side, some very odd looking shaped shadows. That's all right. We'll sort those out in a moment. Open the options by clicking on the show hide control on the shadows tab bar. You can see you tick on shadows. Well, that's actually a tab bar. Very difficult to see on my screen, but there you go. Um, you click on that tab bar and you'll get a show hide option. It's not that down arrow. It's just the tab bar. So if you click on it again, it'll hide it. Click on it again, it'll show it. Da -da, like that. But that brings up that drop down. So you can adjust the opacity and softness to a softer tone. About 60% and about 12 respectively should do it. And you can see I've got opacity there set to 60% and the softness to about 12. So those shadows are nowhere near as black as they were a moment ago. They're, they're a softer shadow, which is what you really want. To help adjust this even more, go back to text. You've got inspector, properties, behavior, filters, and text there. And select self shadows. You can soften this a little by bringing softness back to about 94%. I've still got it at 100 there, but it, it doesn't have a lot of effect. But bringing it back to 94, um, you might want to go a little bit below that. But 94 worked out, worked out fine. This will help to select a different material type for the inside of the letters. And that's what we want to do. You can see you've got self shadows and below that's environment. Firstly select side basic and then select multiple. Now you can see those buttons there. There's front edge, front, front edge, side, back edge and back. And they're all basic. So select side basic, click on it so you've got it selected. At the moment, front basic is selected. Now when you select on side basic, you can then select multiple, which is above the top there. Now red leather is a nice look, I thought, for this. So making sure you have the side option selected, select red leather. You'll see the sides of the letters change. And if you look up there where the letters are, you can see that the letters have actually changed. The sides of the letters have now got that red leather look. Gives it a bit of interest and a bit of depth. 
Now as we're almost done for this exercise, turn off the show overlay and you can clearly see the letters in their effects. Now show overlay, it's right up the top there, top right hand side. The next shot slide will show you a short video of the playhead moving along the timeline. Now if you can't find that show overlay, have a look in the help file. Go up to help and, and select it. But it's just in that group there, under view, show overlay. So you've got 100% render a view. So in view, you can show overlay. And you can show or hide just about anything from that control. Very small control options on here. <laughs> so if you're used to using Affinity with its very small control options, you should be well used to this. So let's have a look at the playhead. So let's just run this and see what it looks like. And there we go. Needs a little bit of work here and there, but it's looking good. Now that's it for this exercise, as I mentioned. I would, I would um, strongly recommend, especially for Affinity users, the, the controls and commands on here should look fairly familiar. And they're certainly the right size to be familiar. But experiment with backgrounds, experiment with objects, different lettering. Um, continue experimenting with this until you get it right. And then when you've finished it, you go right over to the right hand side, top right hand corner there where it says share. And just like Affinity and anything else on Apple basically, you can share it to a movie file. And it will export it to a little movie file. You can then use in your YouTube movies or promotions or... Uh, Instagram, TikTok, whatever you like. So, you know, I hope you enjoyed it. Interesting little exercise. The next one I bring along, I'll be using um, graphics that I've designed specifically in Affinity to use in Motion. I hope you're enjoying these design ideas. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. And if you would, click on like. That's the big thumbs up and tap the bell, that way you'll be reminded of any future videos coming up in the Motion, um, um, Apple Motion playlist.